Hey everyone, this is Andrew from Mantis 3D Printer. Today I'm going to be showing you how you can use the Loft tool in Fusion 360. So the Loft tool is designed to create a transition shape between two sketch profiles. So we'll start off and make our units inch. Then say we can put a four inch square, with our center rectangle, down on this first plane. Now if we do an offset plane from there, and then put a circle on this top plane, we now have a shape that if we were to try to do an extrude and taper or do fillets or something like that, it'd be very difficult to transition between these two. So if we use the loft, we can transition right between them very easily. And if we went into that second sketch and change the size, our loft would update accordingly. So we can use this to our advantage. What we'll do is we'll make a vacuum adapter. At home I have a table saw with a one and a half inch input size and a two inch input size on my shop vac. So we'll make a sketch on this first plane here and then go to our arc and make a three point arc and then hit X to change our sketch type to construction. You can also click over here and hit L to make a line. We'll drag out and you'll see that it can snap to tangent there. You want to snap it to tangent there, hit your check mark, and do the same thing here. You can then drag this point so that it's touching the origin and it's coincident there. See, it can't move. Then we can select that line and hit horizontal vertical. That way that line will remain vertical. If it was closer to horizontal, it would get snapped to horizontal. But then we can hit perpendicular between this line and this line, create a nice 90 degree angle there. So we'll set this to say a three inch radius, hit D and then select this and set that to three inches. And that'll be the radius of a curved vacuum adapter. So on that, we'll also want a portion that the vacuum will plug into and that'll plug into the table saw. So we'll make the table saw end of it one inch long and the vacuum end of it one and a half inches long. Then we need to define our diameters. We'll want the outer diameter of this one to be one inch and the inner diameter of this one to be two inches. We can then select this line and select this point. When you select a line and a point and hit midpoint, it'll set the midpoint of that line to be on that point. We can do that again up here. So now we have the basic shape of our entire adapter. This is the only line that's not a construction line in this sketch, and you'll see why that is in just a second. So then under construct, we can do a plane along path and select this line. You'll see that it only highlights this line because the plane along path will only see construction lines or non-construction lines. It won't see them joined together as a full path. So when we select this, we can drag it to the end You'll see that it butts up against the end there. And if we did the same thing at the beginning of it, it'll butt up against the end and create a face along that path. We can then create a sketch here, and this will be where our input shape gets defined. So we can then project this line, and then we can turn off that first sketch and turn this into a construction line so it doesn't interfere with the loft later then put a circle here and snap that to that point. So now we have a circle that's driven off of the dimension in the first sketch. You can see that if I went in here and I wanted to change this to be 2.5 inches, you'll see that that circle updates accordingly. So we can do the same thing on this plane for our other circle. Hit P to project, select that line, hide the first sketch, make it a construction line, and then put a circle here. And then show that first sketch, finish up, and we've got all the sketches we need for the entire model. So here, the one thing that we will wanna do, since we want this to be an inner diameter and this to be an outer diameter, we'll have to make sure that we specify that in the sketches. So we'll hit O, and we're going to offset this with hitting the O key, opens up the offset tool, 0.1 inches to the outside. Then here, we'll do the same thing on the second sketch here. Hit O 
and then offset that to the inside by doing negative 0.1. And finish the sketch again. So now what we can do is we can use our loft tool. If I select the loft between here and here, you'll immediately see that just creates the easiest path, the shortest point, the shortest path between these two points, which is just a straight line. So if we select a rail and set it to be a centered line, that's what this line here is for. Once again, why these aren't um, normal lines, so that they're construction lines, so that the loft ignores them and just uses this one. And when we select it, you'll see that it shapes the loft to that. We can then do the same thing again to hollow that out, since even though we only select that outer profile, the loft automatically fills it in. So we'll, so we'll turn all three of those back on, hit our loft and go between that inner circle there. Select the center line and select that line. Now we have a nicely lofted and cut shape to adapt between those two. If we hit E to extrude, we can then pull this out. And we can pull this out to whatever length we want, but we can hit our extent here, and instead of distance, we'll do two object, and set it to this point here. What that'll do is have the distance that this is extruded be based off that sketch that we first made at the beginning. We'll do the same thing over here with this line. Once again, set our extent to this object and select that point there. So now what we've made is a nice modular parametric design. We can put a section analysis on this face so we can look at it from the inside. And this entire model is driven off of this first sketch. So say we want this to be a larger curve, we could set this to be a six inch radius, creates a much larger curve for our bend there. Say we wanted this to be a four inch adapter and this to be a one and three quarter inch adapter. We could just change those sketches. We want this to be a six inch long input and this to be a half inch long input. We just change those dimensions and the model updates accordingly. This allows us to have a very modular system here where if we want it to be adaptable to multiple sizes, all we have to do is go in and change those sizes. We can revert that back to the original sizes very easily just by changing these dimensions to what we had them at before we get our original model back. Change that back to a three inch radius and we have a smaller adapter again. That's all we have for today. Thank you very much.